I've never ever told anyone this story. We go. Let's go. We go. It is 3:59 p.m. Is it I'm really? it is. I'm sat in Liverpool, travel to the hometown of the man who sat in front of me. Um I'm going to be really honest. I started this podcast out of pure selfish reasons because I wanted to spend more time with people who I find inspiring and intriguing, people who make me question their mindset, how they work, how they function, and really for me to learn more. Nice. And you're the perfect person. Perfect. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. The voice you can hear is that of Darren Till, (laughs) UFC fighter. So I wanted to start asking you to tell everyone listening a short summary of your life story, Darren. I'm Darren Till and my start in life was very, very good. I had a good family. Uh, I played football as a child. But I was always a very like a uh, angry kid, and I always wanted to be like the, should we say, the cock of the playground. So I got involved in fighting, and I was fighting Muay Thai for a few years, and then I realised that Muay Thai wasn't really my calling. So I switched over to MMA. I had a few back sets, I had a few forward sets, and you know I dug deep. There was days where I didn't have no money. There was days where I didn't have no food. But I just remembered that there was an end goal. And it wasn't about money or anything. It was about creating a legacy for myself and for my future kids for when I die to leave the till name strong and healthy. So uh, fighting in Brazil, fighting in England, fighting all over the world. I remember on on a few days notice, I got a contract to fight in the UFC, what I'd always wanted to do. And I didn't think, as I said, about the money. I didn't think about anything. I just thought about going in there and starting the legacy there and then. And that was in May 30th of 2015. Forward a few years and four main events later, and I'm sat here with you, and 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 that's basically sixty seconds of that until. Amazing! It's been an exciting. It's been an exciting few years for you. Mm-hmm. You have come through yeah. lots, yeah. and we'll talk about some of it now. Yeah. Um, but the first thing that drew my attention to you, and the things that blew my mind initially, was something that never really happens in media. Is the way we met. Right, it's the first time we met. I don't know if you remember. It was for Cage Warriors in it Liverpool. It was in Carbon, wasn't it? Oh no, it was Cage Warriors and then Carbon. Exactly. Yeah, so know. first Cage Warriors in Liverpool. You were. I was hosting with Dan Hardy, and you were yeah. a guest on the show. Yeah. We actually touched on the subject um, as you were a guest. We touched on the subject of UFC coming to Liverpool and how we hoped one day it would. Yeah. It was well before the Wonder Boy fight. Yeah. Um, and I got a very quick introduction to Darren Till and who he's like. So I had to apologise more than three times for you swearing live on air. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> And And then off you go and disappear. And I was on the train back from Liverpool when I got a phone call from ESPN asking how soon could I get to Liverpool because there's a UFC fighter who, and I quote, was making waves in Europe. Really, yeah. I hadn't even gotten back to London yet and they'd asking me to turn around. It's lovely that. I then came to Calbon, interviewed you uh, for ESPN. We'd made some brilliant clips. Yeah, I remember it. It was I was mind blown by your intelligence. Yeah, a lot of people they don't know. That's 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 the bait. I let everyone know that I'm just like cocky and say things out of but they don't know behind do they mates that uh, obviously I've got my friend next to me, I'm looking at him all the time. Yeah. But I am I don't want to blow my own tongue, but I'm a very clever individual, but I don't sh- I don't I don't I don't need to show it because in fighting, you don't really need to show that you're a clever individual. You just need to show one, you've got a good personality, and two, you can fight. And and, and the rest is really irrelevant, you know, obviously other things here and there you need to have. You know, if I could touch on an example like Connor, you know, he had the talk, he had the fight, and, you know, he could make a lot of money. And you've just got to have that. You don't need to come off as, like, this intelligent human being turn up to press conferences and suits and that. Like, that's not me. Like, you know, why do you want to do that? Well, people have a stereotype of fighters, but yeah. fighting itself is pretty intelligent. Look at the Wonder Boy fight. Yeah. It's a chess match. Yeah. You've got to think yeah. ahead. You're yeah. throwing feints and you're yeah. planning on what someone... Exactly. You're seven steps ahead. Yeah. Um, but I was mind-blown specifically about your Portuguese. You speak Portuguese <laughs> perfectly. Then, I'm half Brazilian, and yeah. honestly, you were... You're full Brazilian, aren't you? say that, but Kinda. you're full <laughs> You look like a Brazilian. Thank you. It's true. <laughs> But your Portuguese is exceptional, and that's self-taught, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I've, I've had this mad of just been telling you this story. Like, I'm proper mind-blowing that we're talking about this, because we've just been talking about it before. Because, like, I always tell... Like, I get the same questions all the time, and, and like, it's always like, oh, you want... It's, like, the same question, but, like, I've never, like, really went into depth of, like, what Brazil was like for me. Like, there was a, there was, it wasn't all, like, roses. It was hard for me. And, like, I remember when I got there... And I'm not going to say why, but I, I, I arrived there with two scars on my face and two black eyes. 
And I remember sitting at the table and I was quite an angry individual. And I remember these people like looking at me and speaking in Portuguese. And I remember looking across to me coach and like, and I remember saying, tell them if they've got something to say, to say it in English. And he was like, they're not saying nothing bad. I said, they don't give a fuck. And then I remember going home that night into the, I was in this small apartment. Like, you know how hot Brazil is. It was small. It had one fan. Like literally it was a bed, a little bathroom and like a little cabin. It was so small. And I remember thinking, right, you fuckers, yeah, I'm going to learn this language then. It depends how long I'm going to be here. So I had a little, I had a blue book, sorry. I had a little blue book. It was from the stationary box in the Strand in Bootle. And I wrote down every word that I thought I would need on a daily basis. So I didn't have much money, so I would go to the supermarket. And the only thing I could really afford was eggs uh, and, and like a bottle of, of pop and, and like, you know, a tub of Nutella. That's like that's really all, all I could afford at the time. Gosh. So I remember saying stuff like that. And I remember I used to I used to know that the girls were like, you know, making fun of me and that. You know, I'm from Liverpool. We're not, we're not, we're not stupid people. We're very much on the ball, you know, which is like a saying for us. And, and I just thought, right, you're going to see. And, and it didn't take me long to just start speaking and talking in conversation. That, and I didn't have, like, I'm, I am sometimes a shy individual, but then there's sometimes that I think, no, you know, I, it's like survival mode. And I always try to put myself in, in like, the jungle. Is if, like, let's just say the world comes to an end, would I be one of the people that would survive? And, and yes, I would. So I always like For to put sure. myself in that mentality. And that's the mentality I was in. Couldn't speak the language. I had no fucking money. I was I was shit at MMA. I was trying to be better than all these guys in the gym who were animals. And, and it was proper me in survival mode. You're always ready to fight, in uh, a sense, in every sense. Yeah. And I guess learning Portuguese was yet another fight. I have to learn it to survive. Mentally, maybe. Yeah. And, and you still are. That hasn't changed, has it? Because I know a story from when you were in America. I think you told me, or someone close to you told me, you were walking around a supermarket and you heard... Obviously, here in Liverpool, people know who you are. But in mm. America, I think the first time you were there, you weren't aware of how popular you were. Yeah. And you were in a supermarket and someone started shouting, Darren, Darren, yeah, Darren. Yeah, yeah. And you you turned around ready to fight him, thinking he was looking yeah, for trouble. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I got to Vegas, I got to LA, and just walk on the streets of, like, you think about it, not another city, another country completely. Mm. You, like, I don't, I don't see myself as a famous individual. I just see myself as someone who's well-known, who's just trying to do what I just love to do. Like, I just love to fight, and, and, and you know, it's like a sport and whatever, but... When you're in another country and you've got people who actually recognise you, then you think, wow, like it, it doesn't hit home, it still hasn't hit home with me. And you're stopping for photos and you're all just taking in your stride. But when you actually think about it, it's mental. Like yeah. It's crazy. So like, it happens so many times in Vegas, it happened in LA. Is that true then? At the yeah, that's true. That's you thought the lad wanted to fight true. you. I don't think I told you, but it's definitely a true story. I yeah. think someone might have told you, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, then I get, I'm still talking about the journey of how I met you. So I get back, uh, so I interviewed you for ESPN and I was mind blown really by your intelligence then. And then on the train home from Liverpool, again, I get a phone call in the same week asking me to prepare to interview an individual who is doing really well and looks like it's going to have a big fight coming up. I Clearly the talks of the Wonder Boy fight were already happening. That was by the UFC. And I remember straight away saying, do you need me to be in Liverpool? Because I'm just literally just left for the second time. <laughs> no, that was time. London, wasn't it? And you came, yeah, to, London. came to London. And yeah, so I got to interview you then on the third time for UFC Connected. And that was a more in-depth interview, but I left there thinking, I need to know more about this guy. Mm. I need to learn more about this guy. Mm. And that's sort of what you do. You People follow you. Mm. People, you know, you have definitely a pull in that sense, but people want to know more. Mm. I guess my first question really to you is like, why do you think the media loves you so much? Just because I think that not even in fighting, I think, in a lot of sport. You know, you've covered football for a while, Leila. And if you ever see, like, interviews... Like, even one of my heroes, Gerard, like, he, he, like his interviews were always very, like, short and, 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 and you don't know really what to gain from it. And, and other guys, like, Rooney and stuff. And, like, with me, there's none, like... My, they've probably got someone behind them saying, say this or say that. Don't like, I just say what comes to mind. And whether it be good or bad, at least people know that I'm just telling the truth. Like, I just tell the truth and I don't like, I don't like hold back. There's no like bullshit with me. Like if I don't like it, I'll say. And if I do like it, well, you're going to know about it. So every interview I give, I don't give a lot away, but I give an honest interview and I'm just like, I'm one of them. Like if you just want to say all these people who follow me and the fans, whatever, I'm one of them. Like I act the way they act, like, like on social media. I'm like just, I'm not like... You're not trying to please anyone and follow no, any rules, no. right? So if someone says, fuck me, I'm going to say, fuck you. Do you know what I mean? Fair like enough. If someone, 
puts me down about my fight that I lost, I'm going to put them down in another way. And people might say, well, you shouldn't do that. Well, why shouldn't I? Like the other day it was funny because some guy messaged on, 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 on Instagram to me and like I love having a bit of banter and beef back and forth. And he said something like it was, it was I can't remember what he said. He said like, you got beef, ha ha, whatever. And I, and I just said something back to him, something about, I can't remember what I said back to him, this girl. I think I said something about his mum or something. Yeah, for sure. He and, probably and swore think, and said something about his mum. Yeah, for I sure. did. Or it was girlfriend. And this girl, <laughs> this girl who wasn't his girlfriend, messaged me and was like, yeah, you a uh, big paragraph. I didn't even read that. Oh, I gosh. thought, wow, you've got no time. <laughs> you've got too much time on your hands. And, and she was like, you shouldn't be doing that. And I was like, listen. And I just said to her, it's a doggy dog world. Like if someone's going to go and fucking call me out on something, try and put me down in, in a low level in my life. I'll put you down just as bad. Like, I can do it. Don't prod the gorilla. Yeah, so, like, if you, if you don't want it, as I say, I've got, like, a saying, it's a dog-eat-dog world. So if you want to be if you want to be like that with me, I'll be like that with you. So. so I sat down and thought to myself, what is it about Darren that I find so intriguing? What is it about Darren that I want to learn from? Why do I want to spend more time? And each interview we had with you, you know, I wanted to know more. It was never long enough. And sometimes the questions are given to us and we don't get to ask what we yeah, want to exactly. ask. And yeah, so I kind of left there kind of unsatisfied and wanting to know more. And there were two things that I think you've suffered with and nailed in that sense. That two things that you know well and that you could help a lot of people with and could teach a lot of people with and two things that I look to you to inspire me with. They're both confidence and fear. Yeah. And they're two things you've like It's you've like the got opposite ends of the complete spectrum, juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah, complete opposite ends. I don't know if they complement each other for you or what it is. Mm. But I've broken them into two sections I want to talk to you about each. Cool. Which do you want to do first? Fear. You want to talk about fear first? Fear first, yeah. I'm starting. I'm getting into this now. What have I put on my notes first? I knew he'd say that. Do you know why I know he'd say that? Because he's confident, and he wants the hardest thing first. He wants to fight. (laughs) Right? I'm learning. No, you're not learning. You're impressive. Wow. Wow. I knew he'd say fear because he wants to fight. He's going to choose the hardest. I was saying, literally, just saying. Twenty minutes before we got here, I was saying like, like. I like, and my girlfriend says this a lot, I like to feel down in the dumps mm. or like to feel like I'm down so I can build myself back up. I don't like to feel like I've got it all or whatever. I like to feel like I've got fuck all because with that mentality comes, it just, it's like, yeah, it's like animal inside. You think I've got fucking nothing here. They, they're not taking that from me. You I'm perform gonna under pressure. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Example again, Connor performs under pressure, you yeah. know, all these, it's, Definitely, it's true that what you've done there with that fear first. Obviously. Let's start with fear then. Start with fear. I find it really refreshing and powerful how you talk about fear, how you've been open about how scared you are yeah. pre-fight. Now, I watch you and you don't look remotely bloody scared. <laughs> I want to talk about, let's talk about that Wonder Boy fight and the moments beforehand. So you're in a room where you're warming up, you've got a TV screen, you can generally see people, uh, the actual TV yeah. show, people walking in, your opponent walking in. You then have the moments where you get your hands wrapped. You have like five TVs as well, so you can't miss what's going on. You, it's can't, like, you, can't you watch your own walk in, yeah, as in yeah. you're, you arrive well, you in the You can when you're walking out, yeah, so. And that too. And then you've got your walk out, sweet Caroline, Obviously. a massive moment. Yeah. Walk me through that whole thing, when you're scared, when you switch it, What what's your mind doing? It's, it's like... It's hard to say because when I've had, like, when you have a, I've always tried to explain it, like, when you have a street fight, like, I don't know if you've ever had a street fight lately, you don't... Do I look like I've had a street <laughs> No, fight? you don't look... <laughs> you look like you could scratch or something. <laughs> Do you but, know I got expelled from school for fighting? Really? Yeah, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> but, like, fear is, 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 like, when you have a street fight, you don't have time to be scared. Yeah. Because it happens so quick in the moment. So let's say, for example, you're having road rage. First, you're shouting at each other, then you're stepping out the car and you're both having a fight. Not in my... Not in like my world, but I'm just trying to give an example. Mm. With a fight, it's different because let's say now my fight got booked with Mazadal about 10 weeks before the fight was happening. So we're three weeks away now. So another add on another seven to that, it's 10 weeks. So you got to think that for 10 weeks, you you live on edge because like you can't really have a normal life because every time you do something, you've got to remember that in nine or 10 weeks, you're fighting a certain individual, whoever it be. You know, in that case, it was obviously Wonderboy. And, 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 and sometimes it is the opponent, you know, whether the opponent's what he is, what he's about, what he says, what he does. Sometimes the opponent can get into your head. It's never happened with me. I don't really give a fuck what the opponent says. Like, I just want to fight. So you can't scare me. But 
you can see where people go wrong, where they get scared and they get like that. I, I, I'm just always like happy, very emotional, and I, I am very, very like scared, but I like that. Mm. There's been some fights where I haven't been scared. For example, my last fight, I wasn't too scared. I was just sort of like very overly confident, like I'm going to blitz this guy. But there's been times where I've been so scared and I've fought at my best, and it's like... You get to the changing rooms and start it, and you because you got to take your, your your clothes off, you get your hands wrapped, and then you're like, I start getting sweaty hands and and, and your heart pumping. You think right, and, and I just start like getting into like a happy sense of like of of a mood, but also like hyping myself up. And then, you know, the guy comes to the door and it's like right five minutes to go, and it's like right five minutes, and I've got to walk out in in front of all them people. And, and perform in front of all them people. I've got, I, you know, there's a referee there. That's it's a massive event. There's twenty thousand, maybe millions around the world watching. So it's like your adrenaline's just going mad. It's, it's going crazy, and you've got to like bottle all these emotions up, and you've got to like put them into a ball and just let out the certain ones that you need. Because sometimes you can let them get control of you, and and as soon as you're walking out, like for Wonder Boy, there's just all these people shouting, and you're just like. Wow, I just shouldn't need that confidence here. So just hand in the air, walk to the cage, see everyone. You're just like, this is unbelievable. You step in the cage and then it's like, wow, right now me and two individuals, we're just going to slug it out. We're going to fight. Like, Go it's back a, fight a little to the bit death. for me. Go back Sorry? a little bit for me. Yeah. As in, no, 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 not with the mic. I mean, literally in your story. <laughs> yeah. Because um, that walkout, Sweet Caroline, at the Echo Arena, this is Liverpool, um, UFC coming to Liverpool for you, literally only because of you. <laughs> I'm pretty confident 99 to 100% of the people there were there for you. <laughs> Hopefully. That moment was really special. Yeah. You came out, you put your hand up in the air. What yeah. was, was that almost like, you think you have to? Or what, what was going through your mind in that I, moment? I, you don't know what you're doing. You're, you're, the adrenaline's just going through you. You're not concentrating on anyone. Like if you try to have a conversation with me before, like you, just, you, just, you just be like, yeah, yeah, all that sounds, yeah. But you're not in a frame of mind. You're in like a different planet. Mm. Like, well, I am anyway. And you're yeah. just like... What the fuck? Why am I? You say to yourself, "Why am I putting myself through this? It's so scary. Like it's, it's so." So there's fear there. At it's that so time much as well. fear. It's like so amazing, but so much fear at the same time. You're like, I've said it. I remember for the Derby fight before I was walking. I was like, "Why am I doing this to myself? Like, this is this is hating me so much. I'm so scared right now, but all at the same time, I fucking love this shit. So it's like, as I said at the end both ends of the spectrum one end's like with me, like I just love fighting I'm like yeah I fucking love it but the other end's like damn this is scary shit what are you doing to yourself you've put reins on fear and you're using it to your benefit right? it's definitely any man any man in this world or any woman who says that they're not scared I call a liar because there's no way you can't be going into a fight sparring and stuff like that's different it's behind closed doors you can if you get a body shot and go down it's okay whatever fighting in front of let's just say the UFC it's just it's mind boggling it's so you're on your like, own in that for, for London I'm going to be so scared but I'm going to also be so fucking fired up and game so it doesn't make sense because the, they're both there they, mm. and they don't meet in the middle because you're just you're so scared and you're so game well I am in my sense Masvidal is he just going to be all game and a little bit of fear you don't know but that's him I don't really care about him I just know that me going into a fight I am terrified of fighting, but I love it as well. There's a moment the camera caught. I think you were just taking your T-shirt off just before the judges start rubbing your face down and checking you and Colin saying something to you. Colin says, enjoy it all, son. Ah, enjoy it all, son. They're all for you. He said something like, enjoy it all, son. They're all here for you. And I remember just belting out Sweet Catalan, just looking around, seeing a few of my mates and everyone was, and I was just, I got shivers and I was just like, wow, like, that until the little lad from County Road, Liverpool, has come to this, like, fucking well done, Darren, because it was you, that was all them hours, all that. There's a lot of people that help along the way, but they don't do it for you. And a lot of people want to give advice. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. You just have to take the good with the bad. And people think they know best than you. People think they know more. But until they've been in that position, they don't know nothing. Because what we do, like, you know, I don't want to disrespect no one here now, but... Like, I'd, I really don't want to disrespect someone, but, like, a nine-to-five job, I could learn to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. in a, you know, I could do that, but they could not do my job. 99% of the world can't do what I do, and they can't. Yeah. And it's not just in the gym training. It's everything else, mentally and physically, and diet and whatever goes on with that. So, you know, I'm in that 1% that, yeah, I did get there, and, and I fucking put my hours in, and 
I believed in myself. So then tell me what happens when you step in that Arctic in, because there must be a moment when all that adrenaline becomes focused yeah. and you've got to sit there and listen to the st song of the next guy. Exactly. So you step in, whether you're first or last. In that case, I was first, obviously. He was higher. So you step in and then it's like... Like we, we got a, there's no more like a, there's still a drown but it's like it's it's like in the back of your heart okay. it's, it's weird if I can explain it's like in the back of yourself at the start it's in the front you're like fuck and then when you're in there you're just like yeah okay sound well I am anyway you know I'm seeing walking out I'm like okay yeah good music yeah. and I'm looking at him and I don't want to like keep eye contact because that's not me like I don't think you, you, can't, you can't just look at the guys it's weird so I just look at him and give him like a nod like as if to say yeah we're fucking here to fight like I'm here to fight anyway and then he steps in and then, you know, you, if you're the main event, you've got to wait another five minutes because they've got to call out all where you're from, what you do, you know, how many it's kids you've got. Time, and, and yeah, so you're in five minutes and you're just looking, like, I want to fucking smash that guy's head and I want to beat him, but I can't because it's five minutes and I've just got to, like... <laughs> wait. And maybe he's staring me out because they think that works for him and I'm like, fucking, this is awkward, like, just keep doing that. And then it's like, you go to the centre and you're just looking at each other and I just like to think, yeah, okay, I'm not angry, I just want to fuck you up. And then you go back and it's like, then you're in the fight. There's no more to tell. You're just in the fight then. Let's fucking do it. That's... So you've 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 really reined in fear. But I, I feel that maybe some of your past has helped you deal with fear in a better way. Because I guess there's no fear deeper than the moment when you were lying on the street in Liverpool, <laughs> having yeah. just been stabbed and a man holding yeah. your wound. Perhaps that helped prep you for the fear of the ring. Tell me about the fear that you felt then. And obviously in hospital afterwards. Yeah, it's different. It's totally, as I say again, I keep doing that. It's totally different fear because one, I was drunk. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> as we say, people get beer muscles, don't they? Yeah. I'm not one of them guys. I know I can fight. So I don't need to have beer to tell me I can fight. I can't fucking fight with beer or not. But when you get beer, you, you're different. You, you're not in your straight sense of mind, whether, you, whether you've had, what, five or ten or what. I'd had a lot of beer that night and... and you know, I people say oh, it must have hurt. It didn't hurt. I didn't feel it. And, mm. and and then it's then it's like a different type of adrenaline. You'd like sign up. You'd like it's an adrenaline to survive. You don't really know what's going on. Like I was still fighting people after I'd been stabbed. Like twenty minutes after, like I was still trying to fight people. I thought everyone was against me. My mates, everybody. Wow. And then it's sort of like a big come down. It's like you know to explain a big drug, and then you have a big come down, and then you're just outside, and I'm just thinking. Like accepting, I'm just like, well, this is my time to die. Okay, let's just accept it, and that's what I did, dude. There and then, like I was. Just you like, genuinely thought you were yeah, gonna I die? Yeah, I just genuinely thought, like I'd lost that much blood, and I was like in that much of like a coma, and I was like, I wasn't really straight headed. I just was like, but I did it. You know, it's mad because they say you see like a light, mm. and it wasn't like I was seeing a light, but I wasn't seeing the world. I was like, like I kept shutting my eyes, and he was trying to keep me awake outside, and I was like, were you looking for the light? No, I went, but I felt like, not a light, but I felt something like, I feel like I have had near close death because yeah. they were saying I couldn't go to sleep, but I wasn't wanting to sleep. I was just like sort of accepting death and closing my eyes. And then one guy sticking his fingers inside me, but I just kept wanting, but I didn't want to go to sleep. I was just like, and they were rushing not to let me sleep. So maybe that was like, if I close my eyes, I'm going to die. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm not sitting here to say I do know or don't know. I just know in that moment, I'll never forget it. I felt like I was closing my eyes to accept death and, and if I did keep them closed, I was going to die. But I didn't, you know, got in the ambulance, obviously safe and sound. And the next day I was just, I've been stabbed. Fucking, it's one of them. It's another, it's another thing in my life, you know, just get on with it. I wasn't really too, I wasn't too bothered. I didn't yeah. make a big deal out of it, to be honest. But you made some big decisions to, I did, yeah. to move forward from that. Tell us about your... Well, was it Colin's decision, essentially? Well, yeah, because I just, you know, I'm not, as I said, Layla, this story's going to get told, like, a few years from now, I'm going to tell you, but there's a lot more to tell. But, you know, at that point in, in, in my life, I didn't have proper guidance. I had Colin, but I was still, like, sort of a street kid. Yeah. And, and, and I just went to the gym and was just like, Colin, you know... I, I said, what do I do on that? And and he was like, you know, I said, I, you know, I was looking on getting revenge. I was looking on just still doing what I was doing. I was angry. I was sad. Course, yeah. And he was just like that and forget everything. And I was like, maybe I said, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that it's happened. And he was like, go to Brazil. So, you know, I, I just went to Brazil. I, just, I believed and trusted me coach that much that I just thought, so I'll just listen to what you, you say to me and, and I'll do it. And then I went. Fear's been a big thing for you in, in different ways as well. 
um, in different elements? Because I hear often that you like to be feared. Yeah. Why? Because not in like a bully sense. Uh, like I just want people to look at me and say, that, I want people to look, and this is not the truth, I want people to look and say, that kid's not clever, that kid's not academically smart, but he's a fucking animal. Like, I'd rather that title than any other title. Is that to have them underestimate you, almost? No, I just... If there's one thing I want people to know about me on this earth is that I'm a fucking animal. Like, I don't know if I can explain it any better. Like, I want to be the hardest person ever. Do you know why? I don't know. It's Maybe maybe it is, like, that sense of being in, like, a fucking world that's been blown up and it's all survival mode. And yeah. For me to know that I'll survive more than any of them because I am very smart and I'm an animal. It's almost a tribal mindset, isn't yeah. it? Trying to be a pure human. And yeah, and people to... might say, oh, this guy, but I just want to, I want people to look at me and not be scared or feel disrespected by me. I want people to think, he is a fucking animal. Yeah. Don't mess with him. Well, I can confirm they do. <laughs> not many. <laughs> I do. There's some people <laughs> in my gym who have something to say, but that's the mentality, like, and if I can keep that mentality... Going forward, it's, I think it's a good mentality. People might not agree, but for me it works. How much of that mentality comes from Colin? We're talking about Colin Heron, your coach. Yeah. Massively underestimated coach. A brilliant, I don't know, maybe because he likes to keep out doesn't of the... doesn't say nothing. You wouldn't get yeah, him in here, Leila, don't I wouldn't <laughs> say he likes to be uh, quiet. But um, he's he's feared. He's scary. <sighs> I'm scared of him. Oh, uh, Leila, I'll tell you about fear. Like, you know, this grown man next, sitting next to me. I, I know, like, I'll be truthful, I know a lot of hard people in this world, harder than myself, and they fear the ground Colin walks on. And yeah. so do I. Like, listen, any guy steps forward to me wanting a fight, it, it, I'm not scared of any man. I really am. Inside the cage or out, just to clarify, like, I'm not. I am scared of Colin. Like, I, I am. I, and I would never disrespect him. And I would never dare even think I could fight him. And it's not a case of because he's my coach. It's because he is absolutely a fucking machine. Like, he yeah. would kill you in an instant. So, like, you know. So do you find that fear, maybe it's, like, partly respect and inspiring? Well, yeah, he drills it into you as well. Like, he's drilled it into me to, like, you know, if you get people coming in the gym sometimes, you'd be like, you know, not in a bad way, but, like, make sure you fucking beat them up. Like, let them yeah. know what Team Carbon is. And that's how it should be. That's why our gym is feared the way it is. You know, you get some coaches who find fame and glory and, and the add-ons. Like, Colin could have done it with me. Like, mm. you know how much attention we've had these past, For sure. past few years. He could have been out there doing interviews and, and, and whatever, but he hasn't. He just doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to train animals and, and have his little gym. And he just doesn't care about... He doesn't have value for money. He doesn't... He's not bothered. You know, he's wearing the same tracky for 10 years. You know, <laughs> I'm the guy who buys the trainees for him. Like, that's, that's the truth. Yeah. That's the whole truth. And there's other coaches who just, you know, they run with it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but Colin's not like that. Yeah. Colin's, for me, Colin's real. And, and Colin knows I'm fucking real. What has Colin taught you about fear? That it's good. And it's also good to be feared. Like, and I say this, Layla, for people who are listening as well, not, not in a bad way. Like, don't be thinking I'm like, I'm a, I'm a piece of shit or something. Like, it, it, to be feared. Like, that's what I do. I, I don't sit behind a, a desk you know, typing things in. I don't, I'm not in a, in a car place fixing cars. I'm a fucking fighter. So I, obviously I want you to me f to fear me. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. But I think you'd be surprised how much that relates to everyone because a lot of people fight to be liked. Exactly. And the idea of giving up on that and just being like, actually, I don't give a shit if someone doesn't I, like I've me. I've never give a shit, Layla. Like I've, I've got my, I've got my friends who I know who are true to me and, and I've got friends that I know aren't true to me. Not like in that time, but I've got people who are around your circle, you know, just, you know, they're, they're your friend, but you know, I know, I know who's with me and I know who does like me. And mm -hmm. if you don't like me, I don't really give a fuck if you like me or not. Like it's, it's, I'm not going to lose sleep. As long as I've got my two daughters and people around me, friends and family who like me, but I just couldn't give a shit what you say online. You aren't going to hurt my feelings. Just let that be known. So, you know, that's why I say things I say because I'm not sitting there thinking I want to be liked. But it also works in reversal because people see that and they, they are drawn to it. They think, I fucking like this guy because he doesn't give a fuck. Exactly. So they get inspiration from it. But then you get a guy who's fake as fuck and it's all scripted and they hate him because they can see right through his bullshit. Mm. So as much as I don't give a fuck, it's worked, it works for me because people are drawn to that and they get inspiration from that, which, which is what I want. Do you feel like you always have to be that? No, I just, I am who I am, as I said. I, I'll turn up to this interview, Leila, and I'll give you an honest interview. Yeah for your viewers whether they like it or not whether they give the thumbs up or the thumbs down it still doesn't change my life in any way obviously I would I would, I want people to want to watch me fighting that because you know at the end of the day I'm still getting paid as well mm. and, and I want that but 
as long as I know at the end of all this that I was true to me and I stuck by myself. And as I said, there's always people who will try and give you advice who know better than you. And I didn't let them people uh, like manipulate me in any way. I, I'll know that at the end of it all, at least I stayed true to myself. And I think that's what's very important. Now, you just mentioned your two daughters, and I'm glad you did, because <laughs> I was a bit scared to ask you something about them. <laughs> and you mentioned it, and you told me not to be, to be fearless, so I'm going to do it. you got some front on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a dad, yeah. and um, you've had a few things misconstrued in the media yeah. in the past, as yeah. you know. Um, but one thing you talk about is how you've sacrificed family yeah. in order to put your fighting yeah. first. Yeah. Um, I'm a mum, and one of the things I fear is missing out. Yeah, well, that that's my big thing right now. Yeah. I'm missing out on a real big part of my one, one of my daughter's lives in Brazil. And 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 no matter what no one thinks, they don't know the whole truth. Like like I'm I'm here right now. If I didn't leave Brazil at the time I left, I wouldn't be sitting here with you now because it would it would have been a different path. And I had to sacrifice everything to, 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 to continue with what I'm doing now. And I even had to sacrifice her. Now, she's going to be five in March 12th. I'm glad I remember the birthday. <laughs> day. It's March 12th, so she's going to be five soon. And look, I've missed out a lot. Like, I went to visit her last year, uh, but it was for two weeks. Yeah. And then the last time I lived with her, it was a long time ago, you know, when, when me and her mum, mum, mother split up. Uh, I was taking her to and from school, having the weekends with her and, and, and good quality time. But right now I'm missing out on it all. But I know why I'm missing out on it. It's not like I've come to Liverpool, to back to my home place, to just fuck about and dick about. I, I, I'm being very clever. I'm still working at what I want. Obviously I'm living my life. Like You could see me in a water park and say, well, his daughter's over. So I'm just not going to live my life, am I? So the media um, picked up on a line you said, I think you said, uh, I don't care. Um, I'm missing out on my daughter. I'm missing out on, I think, the your... pregnancy of my new daughter. Your yeah. new daughter, Except yeah. That. Your girlfriend was pregnant at the time and you yeah. said, I don't care. Now, I saw that quite differently to what I read. Obviously, we don't trust everything we read anyway. But what I saw was that this is a man who's prioritising his job, prioritising his dreams, because you know that that's probably the best way to take care of them in their future. Yeah. That's the best way for you to be responsible for them. Yeah. Because what would life be without MMA? Where what would you do without it? And where how could you help in that sense? Well, I can tell you now, like, if I didn't have MMA, I wouldn't be in no office job. Like, I would truthfully be on the streets doing another thing that's not very legal. And I know that because of the place I come from, and I'll say that openly because that's that like, is the only thing I probably could do. Mm. I don't know anything else. I've never had a job. I've never wanted to have a job. My job's fighting. I am a fighter. So if if I don't make it in fighting. If I don't succeed on my path, like at the end of all, Layla, if I become 35 and I still, if I haven't got no money, but I've done it the way I wanted to, well, then that's just how it is. But I want to fucking continue with this. So if that means sacrificing birthdays and, and, and some years with, with, you know, my daughter and my presence, then that's just how it has to be. It's not like I'm a guy who who, who, who has a business and who just has got no time completely for, 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 for my family. You know, sometimes you see in films, it's like mm -hmm. cliche. Like I, I leave the gym in the afternoon, I come and see my daughter and it'd be the same. Like when, when my daughter's definitely going to come and live from Brazil and Liverpool at some point. Oh, is that happening? That's definitely going to happen at some point in her life. That's amazing. Maybe not now, yeah. but it will happen. I've got everything, my plans are set in motion. But right now, Leila, it's a, it sounds selfish, but it has to be about me. You know, it has to. So, so am I right in saying that's your way of prioritizing your family, I making just, sure they're okay exactly, to be the best dad you could be? You know, my mum, she, she, she's a hard, hard worker, and we don't always see eye to eye. We've had a lot of like confusion in the past, but she's someone who will benefit from all this work. She will never have to work a day in her life. She will have her own house bought for her. And she can have a little cafe or whatever. She loves to cook. Yeah. And 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 they're the, as I'm saying, like f my friends around me will all benefit. Everyone around me will benefit. It's not like I'm in this to have fifty million for myself. Mm. I don't need fifty million. My needs go well before that. Like everyone around me, if I have fifty million, will benefit. Who I know are with me. It's all. It's not just for. You know, as I say, my daughters, my mum benefits, my uncle, who everyone who I know has helped me along the way. My granddad, they all benefit. So you're not, you know, there's no selfishness there. 
and you're very aware of what you miss with your kids. Yeah, very. How do you put that, how do you manage to stay strong and put that aside and put that fear I don't think out? about it. I just, I have my moments where I really, really miss my daughter and then I have my moments where I think, just gotta, just gotta get on with it. It's not the worst thing in, in the world. It, you know, it is bad. But I do have me moments alone where no one knows about, you know, it, this moment could just spring up on me in 10 minutes and I'd be like, so sad. But then, you know, I just have to keep going. Yeah, and, carry and, on. And, and, and I gave her a great start in life, my daughter, you know, like in Brazil, as I say, like, like, I didn't have fuck all, but I was out there training and working at the same time. And when yeah. I say training, I was training like to be the best in the gym and in the country. And when I got my UFC debut, I beat the number one. Uh, you know, I gave her a great start, and now her mother's doing. Her mother's just an unbelievable mother in Brazil. She's doing everything for her, and you know, that's just the way it is. So yeah, I like that a lot. The way that you've sort of, you know, not thinking about something is a technique to stop, put it to bed, and enable yourself to be the strongest. Yeah, I'm not going to sit in lighty and say, "Oh, I dwell every day because I don't." Yeah. Fair enough. I'd be lying to you. I would just tell you, hey, Leila, if there's one thing you're going to get today, you're going to get an honest interview. <laughs> Shall we move on to confidence then? Come on then, yeah. So as a kid, how confident were you? Just, it was unreal. Like, I used to think I was the Ronaldo of the footy pitch. <laughs> and, and there's a guys who used to play footy with me and there was managers. And if they were sitting here now, they'd tell you, like, this is not me blowing my own drum, but I was a terrific footy player. Like, I was so, like, I was really good, very quick thinker. So you see, like, people call Ronaldo arrogant. Um, I and... wasn't on about Cristiano Ronaldo. I oh. was on about Brazil Ronaldo from a long, El long Phenomeno, time ago. El Phenomeno, the yeah. original. The main man, he was my <laughs> idol. Him, Gilberto Silva, Cafu back in the day, Rivaldo. Uh, I could go on. You put yourself at that level. When I was, cause when I was a kid, we used to have the PlayStation One, One, Two, yeah. and it was Pro Pro Evolution Soccer Five, Four, and I'd play it like at the time I lived with my dad, and I would play it every night. We play it every night, and I go Brazil, and I'd love like the Gilberto Silvers, and I'd love the Cafus, because I was a right back, and then I get, went to right midfield, and then my days of footy, you know, by thirteen, fourteen, they were over. Dude, like, they were just over. Were you visualising then? Because Brazil came back to you. Well, yeah, like, th this is mad because I'm talking, but I'm not even getting onto the fact, like, so when I was a kid, my heroes were all Brazilian footy players. There was not one, like, I no one, like, obviously Gerard, but that's a cliche, he's Liverpool. But if I was playing pro evolution soccer three or four, it was Brazil. The team was Brazil, the national team. It was Gilberto Silva, Cafu, Kaka, you got Rivaldo, Ronaldo. I'm missing names out, but... Were you born? Ronaldinho, I used to love him. I used to get FIFA Street. I used to do all the dribbles with him. And where I lived in 99 Delamore Street off County Road, we lived on the second to the end house. So when we go round the corner, there was a street called Leighton Street and it had a green box, yeah. like a, an electricity box. And every night, if you wanted to find me after school till about nine o'clock at night when my mum would shout me in, I'd be playing footy, I'd be kicking the ball. If someone was involved, we'd be playing together or I'd be kicking the ball, kicking the ball. So were you, would you say you were born confident? You very conf confident, yeah. It, it very, didn't come from anything? No, it didn't come from, no no lectures from my dad or anything. Are your parents no. confident? My parents are just two normal people who just go to work and just just go about life. Yeah. It, it, I don't really know. I, I don't know. I've never I really had that conversation. I don't remember them having it with me. It was just you. It was you just had me. It. Like, you know, I always, I've always thought of myself as a very special individual. Mm -hmm. And whether that's cocky or what, I don't really care. But I, I know I'm special. See, when it comes to talking about cocky and arrogance, I think if you can't back something up, right, then that's cocky. But yeah. when you're 18 and one, that's not cocky. That's yeah. right. That's rational. Yeah, that's factual. I'm, like, people misinterpret cocky because cocky is... When you're cocky, you're very arrogant. Mm. So you think that everyone's below you in, in, in the cage and outside. You, you you don't treat people, you know, it, it comes to something when someone treats, you know, like... If you think you're better than someone, but that's different someone, to your confidence. You don't have that. Do no, you? I don't have that. Yeah. I, I, treat, I treat people with the same amount of respect they give me. And and, and sometimes there's people that you, you meet and, and, and you just get a bad vibe anyway. But True. when you're cocky... It, it, it's just mad. It's hard to explain cocky and arrogance. I, arrogance is a very bad trait to have. And mm -hmm. when you're arrogant, you you feel like you don't need to train as hard as you do. You feel like, well, you, like if I was arrogant, I wouldn't listen to everything Colin tells me. If Colin Mame is a word to me, even if I'm not looking at him, I'm like, yeah, Col, you know, it, I, I am a very cocky, confident individual, but there's no arrogance about me. So do you think pre Woodley fight, maybe the confidence was wavering? I think my confidence Woodley fight was just like, 
I, I, I knew how much Woodley was scared of me, and I just thought, I'm just going to obliterate this guy. But at the same time, I wasn't worrying about Woodley. I was worrying, like, about weight. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about a guy like that. You know, he's a, he's a phenomenal fighter. He really is. And, and whether I like him or people like him, you, they can't lie. The fights or him as, as, a, as a fighter can't lie. It's the same thing with Ben. Whether I like Ben or not, can't tell no lies about his fighting ability. He's a truly phenomenal fighter. And this is what I mean. I'll always tell the truth. So going into the Woodley fight, I wasn't arrogant. I trained. The training I done for Woodley was inhumane. Yeah. It was inhumane. But I just thought, this fight's man. I'm destined for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad it happened because I wasn't destined for that. I was destined to come back. So what knocks your confidence? No, nothing. nothing. Not even social media? No, it's, it's social, Layla, social media is, and I know a lot of people say this, uh, but it is just a big fake. We we post moments that we want people to see. You would never see me post a moment where I've just had a, an argument with my girlfriend or <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. We post any, we have the choice to post what we want. Mm -hmm. And I do it. I post any and I want, and I post the good stuff from my life. I'm not going to post the bad stuff. That's what social media is for. I mentioned social media because I know you spoke about how um, the weight cut for the Woodley fight was different because you had it in your head about missing weight before social media, newspapers, everyone was on it. You go, yeah, but oh, when I say social media, again. I mean like interviewers and that, like not really people on social media, it was like interviewers. It's just like, I know I'm conscious, I don't even want to do it no, now because like, you got a fight coming it, up. It, like, but it's but like, shit. This is what this is the thing. No, I would never ever say no to one of the interviews about what they were asking me because. To me, that was adversity, and you'd have to face it head on, whether it yeah. be good or bad. So every interview, and trust me, like, like every weekend, week out, it was just wait, wait, wait. I never ever said, "Oh, will you just shut up." I always answered the question to every interview, whether it be whoever. But the fact that they were asking that so many exactly, times. it just gets to you. And in my head, I just thought, right, it's all about weight. Mm. When it wasn't, it, it, I had, you know, the, the guy, you know, Owen. You know, yeah. I, I haven't known Owen a long time, and. He's, he's, he is a friend of mine. Like, he is a proper... He is a friend of mine. We're he, talking about Owen Gallagher, your nutritionist weight cut yeah, specialist weight cut. guy. It's yeah. not about the weight cut. I mean, as a chef, Layla, he's incredible. But as a human, he's very misunderstood and he's very, very intelligent. And he's just my friend. He is my friend as much as my weight cut specialist. So if he wants to keep in contact with me forever, that's no problem. That's if he nice wants to, to fuck me off and go and do the weight cut for Connor, <laughs> whatever, that's, that's no problem either. I've got no problem, but... He's, he's my friend. There he is, so. looking through the window right now, waving at you. Get he's to saying, fucking yeah. get in the kitchen and cook some food. Like, that's it, we're not talking about someone now. But, yeah, you know, you just... So you had him there by your side, you had him helping you. was to happy. Speak, but it got in your head, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did, because I, I just put all the pressure on me. It was For me, it was all about weight. I didn't think about Woodley once. As much as I was drilling and everything with Colin... I just thought about weight. I thought, oh, I've sweated enough today. Yeah, so how do you make sure that doesn't happen again? You've just got to, you just got to, as I say, Leila, I'm famous for me, you just got to say, fuck it. You just, yeah. you can't do that again. It's, it's not, it, it's not them stupid interviewers in there who, who are making weight, who, who've got an opinion on everything. Like, I don't mind. I know a lot of in interviewers who are very knowledgeable and know a lot more about fighting than I actually do. Mm. But there's some certain things that they know jack shit about because they've never been in that position. And trust me, Leila, when you're on that last day and you're cutting weight and you're doing everything in your power to make weight and you are in a bad place, you know, they've never been through that. How shit is it, cutting it's, weight? It, I can't explain it to you. We all saw videos. Layla, I, I can't explain it to you. It's, you know, as I, I know one of Dana's pet hates. He hates people not making weight, but Dana's never made weight. And I think if he had a test of like getting, because I'm a, Big, big dude for welterweight. Mm. So I get down to my lowest. It's not like I've got another weight class to go. You know, we're Connor fighting at lightweight. He, I know I keep mentioning Connor, but he's a prime example of a lot of things, Layla. Yeah. You know, as much as people might not like the guy, don't knock the guy. Yeah. You know, a lot of people saying he got beat by Khabib. And, and we're talking about Connor, but I like to give the example of Khabib and Mayweather. But hang on a minute. He fucking knocked Eddie Alvarez out. He beat Nate on the second fight. He knocked jo Josie Aldo out. He knocked Chad Mendes out. We he went knocked 10 Paul. rounds with a world class boxer. So and it was his first I, boxing I don't match. care if you like him or hate him now. Maybe he has gone a bit cocky and arrogant, and that's okay. But you can't deny what he's done. Mm hmm. So when he was fighting at lightweight, he still had another weight class to go. I don't have anywhere to go after welterweight. I can't make lightweight unless you've got some, you know, grade A smack in here, like drugs, and I, you know, make lightweight. But <laughs> that's true. It's true. 
everyone through the glass is wet it's themselves true. now. It's true. Yeah? It's true because I got nowhere to go. So I make sure I get down to my maximum. Does it hurt your body in the long run? Maybe it does a little bit, but it doesn't fucking matter because it's about now, it's not about later. So in that moment when you're in the sauna, when you're wrapped up, you know, and surely your body's wanting to give up, what is it in your mind that's saying, I can do this? You want the truth? Yeah. Do you want the truth? I want the absolute I th- truth. I think about the drink after the weigh-in. I don't think about anything. I think about Nothing gets you through it. Like, I remember the wake up of Wonderboy, Terry Etten, who's, yeah. who's one of my closest friends, who's one of the best fighters I've ever, I've ever seen live in the flesh. He was doing my head in because we were in the sun. He was going, just think about the fight. And I was, I just want to say, I don't give a fuck about the fight now. I just want me fucking drink. So, <laughs> so you're like, dreaming about Diet I'm Coke. Dr- I remember when I made way for Derby, I had a hard way cut. Yeah. I had a very hard way cut. And I remember being in the sun and on my last legs. And I remember thinking I had a cold... It was a, I think it was a berry Gatorade and the fridge was massive. I remember thinking, Till, just make weight and you can drink that. So then once you've made weight, Layla, it's back to the fight. Well, it's not really, you just think about food and getting back up to your health. Then the day of the fight is, is about the fight. But when you're making weight, there's no inspiration or, and I'm not going to tell you this, there's none of that. You just want your drink. So that's the light at the end of the tunnel. That's, that's you looking at the, the next the tunnel, step. Yeah. There's, and... there's no, oh, it's about the fight. No, it's about getting your fucking drink. Trust me. <laughs> The other thing I want to talk to you about was gratefulness. I see a massive connection, especially with Brazil, between gratefulness and confidence. Um, one of the things is like when you're in a really shit situation, not looking at the negatives, but looking at what the positives that you have, being therefore grateful and that building confidence. I know Brazilians as a culture tend to be very, I think it's a religious background, very grateful, very loving for that. And that can help them be confident. That's... Did That's a very interesting that? thing, Matt Layla, because the things with Brazilians, right, is obviously, you know, God's a big thing out there. I yes. personally don't believe in God. If anyone does, fair play to them. If if people don't dis- if people disagree with me, just say fair play to me. Don't try and change me. I don't believe in God. But I know a lot of Braz- like my, my ex girlfriend's mother, she's like she's too much, she's God crazy, which yeah. is as again, fair play to her. I'm not gonna interfere. Her life doesn't change my man doesn't change yours. Uh, but when you believe in something like that, a higher power, like that can make you so confident you don't un- understand. Like, because what they think in their mind, like, let's just talk about Brazilians. Because yeah. as fighters, they're unbelievable. They think that God's going to make them win. They truly believe that. So let's just forget about it, confidence. They just think that God's going to make them win. Like, Jose Aldo, he used to think like that all the time. Yeah. Obviously, he had a flutter in his career. But at the start, Jose Aldo just believed that God would make him win. There's no better confidence than that in the world. So for them, their confidence is God, which is more powerful than my confidence because they believe in in the all-powerful in the world. That's that's crazy confidence. People don't understand how confident Brazilians are. I know Brazilian footballers who say, I feel him on the pitch with me. Exactly. And yeah, just imagining that would give you confidence. My favourite ever boxer, one of them, top three, Roy Jones Jr., God mad. He just said that God used to make him win. And that confidence is is can't be can't be matched. So you don't believe in a higher power, as it were, but you you have things you believe in, and Anfield is one of them. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not a higher power, Leila. No, <laughs> no, I don't. But I know you believe that there is a, a place you're going. There's yeah. a thing you're doing. There's an aim, and it's so strong. Definitely translates into the same thing, yeah. Because I I know that in the next few years I will be the headline at Anfield. I know. Don't tell me any different. Don't tell me that the Anfield don't approve it or the council don't approve it or there's too much noise in that area. I know it's going to happen. So right now I don't do anything about it. I just manifest it. So that's that helps you through, no? That helps me through. Yeah, there's my higher power there. Yeah. And it translates, you know, as you said, then people who believe in God is a confidence that can't be matched. Do you compare yourself to people? Me? No. Yeah. I I truly, when I'm fighting, think I am the best fighter in the world. I think I am better than everyone. It must be hard in an industry where you're literally ranked. Yeah, yeah. And you look at other fighters and you think, oh, I need to climb this ladder or go to him first and da-da-da. You, you really manage not to compare yourself? I don't think... You can. I Imagine me just dwelling now for the past few months about like comparing myself to Woodley. Yeah. I know I'm better than fighter than Woodley. I know that in my heart. Yeah. He beat me. And if we fought 10 times, he might beat me again, but I beat him more than he beat me. And I say that confidently, but not cocky, not arrogantly. As I said, that man won the fight fair and square. He beasted me. He's an unbelievable fighter, but I still believe I'm better than him. Another confident fighter 
is Masvidal, who you're yes. facing. I on, felt that from him. You're facing him on the 16th of March in London. Um, you felt his confidence. Cool as a cucumber. Not only does he respect you, he speaks highly yeah, of he's you. He's just, to be honest, lately, he's just a cool guy. Like, he's just... I, I can't really sit here and say anything about the guy. I could sit here and say, yo, he's a prick, but... He's just cool. Like he just doesn't give a fuck. Like we've seen each other off camera, as he said in the interview. And he's just like, I, I was just like, well, you know, you're okay. And he's like, you're okay. And that's why, maybe BT, you know, all that all around table. They do it with the boxers, and it's always yeah. about fucking just talking over each other. And that. I don't like that. I sat there and I respected his opinion and I listened to him, and he listened to me. And that's respect. That's confidence as well. That's confidence. Very that's confidence. That's confidence. Yeah. I guess there's no smack talk also because you knew it wouldn't shake him. Um, but what would, what but would she? I him? don't have nothing against him either. That's why I don't smack talk. I don't. If there's a guy I don't, you know, I've got something against. You know, I don't want to say I hate, but if I've got something against. It's not like it's different with Masvidal. Like if I could intimidate him, it'd probably be you know. I don't know, Leila. He's older than me. He's had a <laughs> lot more fight. I don't really know if I can intimidate him. I've just got to beat him. Like, there's some guys I'll say, yeah, I'll intimidate him this way or that way. Like, I knew with Cowboy how to intimidate him. And it was that relaxed, cocky, smiley, you know, just letting him think, this kid's actually for real, which he was thinking, he said in interviews. I don't think it works with Masvidal. So, I guess with Max Vidal, the best way to knock his confidence is to beat him. It's just to beat March him, beat him up. You know, as I said, I, <laughs> I want to punch a hole in his face. So. You've said you'll be disappointed if you don't knock him out yeah, in the first round. Yeah, I will. I'll be disappointed. I'll, I'll be going in that second. I'll be like, you fucking twat. But you know, it's a fight, Layla. It's a five-round fight, and, and we've got to be prepared for that. We've got we've got to be prepared to to, to shed blood. I know you're a man who visualizes, and visualizing is really important to you. I don't doubt you've woken up every morning thinking about Masvidal and gone to bed thinking no, about how it's going. As down. I told you, Layla, when you wake up and you wake up and you think, oh, what food. am I having for breakfast? <laughs> thinking about food <laughs> of course <laughs> fuck Masvidal yeah, you're fuck, just thinking about food Leila right now in this way cut series it's not about Masvidal it's not about the win it's about oh make this way and you can have something nice to okay, eat okay so. so I'm going to ask you then two things instead of one I wanted to end on you telling me how you visualise the first round yeah but then maybe you also tell me what you visualise for lunch okay uh, <laughs> I've, just had, I've just had lunch what was it like it looked uh, honestly so I'll tell you about the visualise first and I'll tell you about lunch uh, I just visualise you know all my skills being put into play like what I work with Colin what I know Colin works with me is is terrific like he, he's got a game plan he's got something he wants me to do when I do it I follow it you know I don't miss me classes I put me rounds in and, and, and I don't I don't you know I'm not a lazy person in the gym I really do train hard there's, there's stuff you know sometimes you know you might miss a sit up or two or whatever and I shouldn't be saying that but it's truth <laughs> and every fighter does it I don't care what you say even the great Muhammad Ali probably done it but I'm no slouch. I put me rounds and I put me graft and I do me sit-ups and me press-ups and I really work hard. So I visualise, you know, everything coming together in the fight and hopefully working. And as I say, if it doesn't work, you know, be prepared for five rounds, be prepared for a ground fight. We're, we're prepared. It's MMA, Layla. It's not stand-up fight. And then, you know, I wake up every morning and I have a plan for the day, I think, right? If, if I do me run now, there's a chef... Oh, when he does me a big drink, it's like ah. a BCA drink, amino. It's lovely. He puts ice in it and that, and I, I like. I truly love it. And then I love the surprises I get when I go home for food. So I never ask him what's for food. Oh, you Sometimes want to be Sometimes I'll surprised. say like, "Can I have a curry on that?" Because, but I love the surprise. So like today, I got home, and there was a fruit bowl there, and there was a plate of like guacamole with like this hot chicken. Like he's making Thailand chicken or something. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice. Food's so, a big inspiration for you. <laughs> yeah, love I, really, I love food. I love food. You'll get through it on the right meals. Of course. Listen, this is this is more than a hundred weight cuts I've done. This, yeah. and I can do this shit. But you know, food is a it's a nice quality after the fight as well. Darren Till, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. We look thank forward you. to seeing you March sixteenth. It's like fucking boss on here, by the way. It's not bad, eh? I like I like shit like this. <laughs> Starting from nothing, innit?